All right, let's build a release backlog so we can see how this process works. The easiest way to build a release backlog is not directly in Visual Studio, but actually to use Excel to load up existing lists of items that you already have. So what we're going to do is we're going to come here to the product backlog, and we'll see there's nothing selected, but it gives me all the columns that I'm going to need to build a product backlog. Now I could uh, do this individually by selecting new work item, product backlog item, but instead I'm going to come and select open in Microsoft Office and I'm going to open the query in Microsoft Excel. This will load up the team ribbon in Excel allowing us to build a query or use this query to directly add work items. So I'm also going to go back to a list of work items that I wrote out earlier just in a text pad here and you can do it any way you wish. Uh, could be in a product meeting, capture this in, in directly in Excel and publish it. I'm going to select these items. I'm going to select a, a new column here, which is the description. And we're going to move it over to title. Great. I'm simply going to paste in these work items. It's going to, I've automatically pasted in all the work items. I have the title and the description. I simply need to assign the work item to this. These are all going to be product backlog items. And we see that a backlog priority has already been set in them. And I can publish this directly to Team Foundation Server. Now if I go back to Excel, or if I go back to Visual Studio and rerun this query, we can see all the product backlog items. Okay, so notice that the descriptions didn't come over. I had selected as one of the description items in the Excel workbook here, description, but this version of description, and this is often a uh, something that people jump into, is not the same one as the one used by the Scrum template. In this case, it's the description HTML. Now, I showed this on purpose because I wanted to demonstrate the fact that some items are not going to be editable by uh, TFS. In this case, the description HTML version is read-only in Excel. It's going to be editable directly in the work items through TFS or the Team Web Access, but not through Excel. So for this pieces, those pieces of data, we have to build them one at a time. It's not a big deal once we get it started, actually, because what we can do is come over and drag these work items, and I can populate the description. Now, it's important that I look at the details of the description anyways, because I need to assign an effort and a business value. And that requires a little bit more in-depth analysis. So let's, for this case, let's go with a, a scale of a 0 to 100 for the uh, effort. I'm sorry, for the business value. And um, same thing with the effort. We're going to go with the 0 to 100. So in this case, let's say the business value is 10 and the effort is 3. What is the scale? Well, that really depends on what you want. If you want the scale to be hours, go ahead and make it hours. The idea of not making it hours for the product backlog item is so that we don't have this preconceived notion of how long everything takes, because what if we find out that we estimated everything to take 10 hours, and in reality it takes 35? In rea What we want to do is simply have a relative scale so that we know relatively what things are bigger than one item and what things are smaller. And so that we can determine a velocity of our team and use these items to fill up our backlog based on the velocity of the team. It doesn't really matter whether or not those are hours or whether or not those are uh, t-shirt sizes or, or what have you. It's simply some measure that we can use that's consistent across all the product backlog items. All right, so we can go through here. Now, if we... Uh, say this one's 2 and the business value is, is 15, we can quickly build up what appears to be um, a pretty rich product backlog item. And we can quickly see what is the values that we have coming forward from each of the product backlog items as opposed to the effort it will take to deliver it. All right, now if we go back to Excel and we just simply refresh this, we can see, let me lose this column here because we don't need the description anymore. So we can see that I still, even though I have put in the effort here uh, and the business value, we can then use that to sort in the backlog priority which ones are the most important to us. And we might come back here and say, well, this is the most important. One, two, three, 
four, five, republish this list. In a, I have to go back and actually finish putting in the descriptions, HTML, and we'll have a good list of product backlog items, albeit only it's only five, but it's the start of a release backlog.